Oh, hello there. Now, have you been a little bossy before? Well, tonight's bedtime story is just about that. Tonight's bedtime story is called Little Miss Fickle, and it is written by Roger Hargreaves and pictures by Adam Hargreaves. Would you like me to tell you a story? If you were Little Miss Fickle, you'd say, yes please. Then you'd say, no thank you. Then you'd say, yes again. Little Miss Fickle was one of those people who just could not make up their friends. Ever. About everything. Little Miss Fickle lived in Dandelion Cottage which was on the outskirts of Sunnytown. And she lived right next door to her best friend, Little Miss Sleet, who lived in Tooping Cottage. On Monday, Little Miss Fickle and Little Miss Sleet went out into lunch in Sunnytown. I'll have the soup to start with, said Little Miss Sleet to the waiter as she looked at the menu, followed by the fish. So will I, said Little Miss Fickle. But after the waiter had written down the order, Little Miss Fickle looked at the menu again. No, I won't, she said. I'll have the salad instead, followed by the roast chicken. The waiter crossed out the first order and wrote down the second. On the other hand, continued Little Miss Fickle, I won't have anything to start with, but then I'll have the eggs. The waiter sighed. <sighs> An hour later, after the waiter had worn out three pencils and four order pads, Little Miss Fickle finally made up her mind to have the soup, followed by the fish. The waiter brought the soup. Little Miss Fickle looked at it. I'm not hungry anymore, she said. It was at that moment the waiter decided he was going to be a bus conductor instead of a waiter. On Tuesday, Little Miss Fickle went to buy a hat. I want a new pink hat, she announced to the milliner. The milliner brought her two pink hats to choose from. I'll have this one, said Little Miss Fickle, after she tried them both on. Certainly, madam, replied the milliner, and put the hat in the hat box. On the other hand, said Little Miss Fickle, I think I'll have the other hat. The milliner took out the first hat of the hat box, and then put the second hat into the hat box. But, continued Little Miss Fickle, I think the first hat suited me better, don't you? The milliner didn't say a word as she took the second out hat of the hat, the hat box and then put the first hat back into the hat box. She handed the hat box to Little Miss Fickle. Little Miss Fickle looked at the milliner. Do you have any blue hats? she asked. It was at that moment that the milliner decided she was going to be a ballerina instead of a milliner. On Wednesday, Little Miss Fickle went to the butcher's. I'd like some sausages, she said. Beef sausages or pork sausages? asked the butcher. Pork sausages, replied Little Miss Fickle. The butcher wrapped up the pork sausages. But beef sausages would be nicer, said Little Miss Fickle. The butcher wrapped, unwrapped the pork sausages and wrapped up some beef sausages instead. On the other hand, continued Little Miss Fickle, Chops would be tastier. It was at that moment that that the butcher decided he needed a holiday. But on Thursday, guess what happened? Little Miss Fickle disappeared. Little Miss Neat had seen her past Tooping Cottage on the way into Sunnytown, but she hadn't come back. She didn't come back on Friday either, so Little Miss Neat went looking for her. She met Mr Muddle. Have you seen Little Miss Fickle? She asked anxiously. Mr. Muddle looked in, at her in a puzzled sort of way. Did you say I have been, have I been for a little tickle? She asked. Oh, Mr. Muddle, said Miss Neat, and hurried on. Then little Miss Neat went, met Mr. Forgetful. Have you seen little Miss Fickle? She asked. Mr. Forgetful thought. Well, she said, have you? Mr. Forgetful thought again. Have I what? she said af after a while. Ah, oh, Mr. Forgetful, said Miss Neat and hurried on. 
But could she find little Miss Fickle? She could not. Nobody had seen her. The Sunnydown Public Lending Library has nine, 19,999 books. On Saturday afternoon, little Miss Fickle reached up and took one of the, them down from a shelf. I'll read this one, she thought to herself. On the other hand, she thought again, looking at the other book. Perhaps I'll read that book instead. She put the first book back onto the shelf and took the other one down. It was the 19,999th book she had chosen. Little Miss Fickle had been in the library for three days choosing a book. Three whole days choosing just one single, solitary book. She went home carrying her book. That Saturday afternoon, Little Miss Neat was in the garden of Tooping Cottage when Little Miss Fickle walked past. Where have you been? She called out. To the library, replied Little Miss Fickle. For three days, exclaimed Little Miss Neat. Well, explained Little Miss Fickle, I wanted to choose the right book. And she held it up, and then she stopped and looked at it. Ah, oh, bother, she said. I've read it before. That story was called Little Miss Fickle. It's time for you to go to bed, but I'll see you again soon for another bedtime story. Night-night.